Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and to my third video in December and for today's Christmas swag I've got my Christmas jumper. There's a few reindeers on it and a few kind of snowflakes but you know what I don't think oops knocked my tripod I don't think that's good enough so I brought my dear friend here <laughs> this is great banter it really is that pun was not intended but my dear friend here is gonna just sit on my shoulder hopefully if I don't break him for the whole video and yes I've got a big spot right here so please just ignore it hey I said ignore it anyway for today's video I decided that we might do a storytelling sort of one where I'm gonna tell you guys a story that I wrote in secondary school when I was about 14 or 15 it's intense to say the least there's lots of twists and turns things you don't see coming and the title of this brilliant novel is you did this so the plot of this story is a couple and a child and I actually can't really remember because I haven't read through all of it but I think they own a lot of money and people try to break into their house and that's it I'm just gonna get straight into the story so I'm gonna have to bring down the the black banners to make it more intense here we go it was just past midnight when Laura heard it downstairs I'm gonna have to put on a serious voice sorry it was just past midnight when Laura heard it downstairs the noise of the glass hitting the floor was like waves crashing down on the beach if you want a good essay throw in a few similes someone had thrown a brick through the window and was trying to get into the house. Laura shook Ben and whispered, somebody's in the house. Oh, sorry, whispered, somebody's in the house. Ben was still a bit dazed. I spelled dazed wrong. <laughs> I spelled it dazed. Ben was still a bit dazed by the sudden awakening and the sound of the howling alarm. When Ben was finally alert, he ordered Laura to go down to their safe room. That means they've got money, if they've got their safe room. I'm pretty sure when I am, um, when I was writing this, I was basing it off panic room or safe room. So yeah, you're probably gonna see a lot of similarities between that movie and this story. Laura immediately ran down the hall. But this is annoying me, it keeps slipping off. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing it for the whole movie. Movie? Is this going to be a movie? Laura immediately ran down the hall, but instead of going straight for the safe room, she went to get their son. Is she stupid? Ben told her to go straight to the safe room, but she didn't. And you can see right now that that, that choice is going to have a lot of complications for her. You know, a lot of consequences. Consequences. As she opened the creaking door and saw the empty bed, she remembered that Jack was at his friend's house. Oh. It's okay. I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote that line. Anyway, end of the story. Jack's at the friend's house. It's all G in the skizzle. Laura heard Ben calling. Laura, where are you? So she ran out of the bedroom to go to the safe room. She was running when suddenly she was grabbed ugh, by the ankle and dragged to the ground. It was a masked man who had tripped her. Laura yelled, Hell, in desperation hoping Ben would hear her. Ben went to where the scream came from, but when he got there, the masked man had a gun pointed at Laura. See that, I'm just a great author. Just suspense the whole time. The man said with a stern voice, are you the CEO? Ben hesitated and then replied cowardly. Yes, whatever you want, I'll do it. Just don't hurt my wife. The man pushed Laura towards the safe room and told Ben to lock it from the outside. The forceful man shoved Ben forward and instructed him to go downstairs. When he got to the bottom of the stairs, he saw two more bulky men standing either side of a laptop. Laura was frantically watching the camera monitor to see everything that was going on outside of the box. She hated knowing that she couldn't escape to help her husband when he was so close to her. She was so concerned with the madness outside and wanted to do something that she forgot about the emergency telephone in the safe room. Well, bloody da What an idiot. She desperately searched through the supply box trying to find it. She plugged it into the phone socket in the wall and immediately dialed 999 on the keypad. An automated voice came on the phone which said, Sorry, you cannot make this call as you have no phone signal. 
please contact your service provider. Laura fired the phone against the wall in frustration. Will that come back to haunt her in the end of the story? We don't know. Stay tuned to find out. After this, commercial break. There's no commercial break. Don't know why I said that. You're fucking weird. She dropped to the floor, feeling helpless. As she noticed light shining off an object beyond the door in the safe room. She scurried over to the gap under the door and peeped through to discover that Ben had dropped a key to the door so she could escape. Genius! Laura went to the supply box to find something so she could reach the key. She got the firm wire from the antenna on the phone and made the top into a hook to grab the key. She's like a Bear Grylls person making stuff out of stuff. New paragraph, switch scenes. Do the transfer! One of the men said to Ben, new paragraph, new scene, you know, in the safe room. Now we're not. They wanted Ben shares from his company so they could sell them to the highest bidder. Ooh. Please, the shares are all I have. I don't keep money. All my wealth is in those shares. The silent man of the group punched Ben across the face and another man threatened. Just do the transfer or else we will get your wife down here and make you have to do the transfer. I think that's insinuating that he's gonna kill the wife. The silent man turned the computer towards Ben. Ben reluctantly signed into his account and started working on the transfer. Moments later, he had completed the transfer of shares. The silent man, t I love that description, the silent man. The silent man took the laptop, did some typing and pushed some buttons. He closed the laptop. New paragraph. Laura had just hooked the end of the wire around the key and began to carefully pull it in. Before she knows it, she has the key in her hand, but she dropped it because of a noise. She grabbed her ringing ears and waddled around in a circle because of the disorientation. It was a gunshot. After a few seconds that seemed like an eternity, she turned around to the camera monitor and collapsed with the horror of what she saw. Ben lying in a pool of blood. When Laura finally got the strength to stand up, she grasped the key tightly and inserted it into the keyhole. She stumbled out of the room and got down the stairs. She fell to her knees in front of Ben and wrapped her arms around him, hugging him so tight like she could squeeze the life back into him. She heard the long dragon sirens outside of the police vans. The neighbours called the police after they heard the shot and they were telling the police where the noise came from. The police entered the house so quietly, Laura didn't even hear them. They searched around the house for the clues that could help them to find the murderers. They never found them. Next paragraph. It's been three months now since my husband was murdered. So see that? Switch. Whoa, you can see that going. It's been three months now since my husband was murdered. Days seem like weeks in this dark, miserable world. The police never did manage to find where the shares went. So we lost the house, our car, and all of the money. Jack and I are living in a cold, damp, and moldy apartment a few blocks down from our old house. Every time I close my eyes, I can never read the rest of the story, so I'm gonna have to open them. Every time I close my eyes, I can see him, Ben, looking at me as if to say, why didn't you do something? I could have stopped it if I was a bit quicker. I could have saved him. I can't stop these thoughts in my head. They're banging against my skull. And it feels like my head is going to explode. I can't take it anymore. That is why I'm telling you this story. To let you know how I feel in my solitary world. This is my letter to you, Jack. I'm sorry, but I can't keep living like this. Seeing Ben everywhere I go telling me, you did this to me. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, this is the end for me. What? I was 14 and I was writing a story about someone's suicide note. That is deep. I bet none of you saw that coming. But yes, guys, that is my story for today. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, smash a thumbs up, comment how you think this story should have ended. And subscribe if you want to see a new video like this every Monday.